So when talking about the domain called as legal risk and compliance, one thing to keep in mind is that people have a confusion. Like Krish, I'm I'm going for something called as a, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, in this domain, it feels was so dry or so small. Actually, it's very important. Team. Okay, this domain is very important, even though it's a more legal domain. It's very important to understand. Again, you should understand that when you basically go to a cloud platform, one major challenge you're having is that having a lot of conflicting regulations and standards. Because like, for example, let's say we have a we have a customer who is basic, basically working in India. Okay. We have a customer who is working in India and we have uh, the employees. Okay. We have the employees who is basically working from a different country. We have the data center in different locations. So like when you have a lot of places where your company operates, which law will be applicable there? It will be a challenge, right? So when you go to cloud, the one of the challenges that the various regulations and standards you have to comply with, which can be conflicting for you. That's a very important thing. Second thing is that you should understand the various legal risk, which is basically provided by the cloud, like, you know, risk of uh, various laws applicable, the lack of various controls and all like this. There is a lot of challenges there. Then uh, what is e-discovery? E-discovery is a process of forensics only for law. The process of uh, doing forensics for legal purposes is called as e-discovery or electronic discovery. Then understand that team, we have a word called as contractual and regular data. So basically, there are two things to understand. What is the difference between contractual and regular data team? Contractual means that when you're storing a data, as per our contract, what level of privacy and security we have to provide is called as contractual. I repeat. So let's say, for example, we both uh, work as a part of a company. We are storing data. Okay. Now, the agreement between us, the contractual agreement between us regarding the storage of data is basically what we call as a contractual agreement. And what is a regulated? As per the law, what all level of permissions we have to put is what we call as a regulated. Okay. Like that. Then, then we have something called as a various country specific. So basically understand that you should be very much aware of the various law of regulations and laws for privacy for various countries like GDPR, uh, HIPAA, uh, PCI, then SOX, I mean SOC or SOX, then uh, PIBDA, like this, you should GLPA, you should be aware of this. You don't have to memorize everything in detail, but it's very important for you to understand these laws and regulations. Very, well. just understand and see if it's applicable or how, which all things are available for G or align the GDPR or not. Okay, very important. Like that. So team, the next uh, word which we're having is called as privacy impact assessment. Okay, so what is a privacy impact assessment team? So when talking about the word called as privacy, it's, it's a process which we use to identify and evaluate the privacy of a cloud or basically the way where we store our personal information. Like when you basically go for a cloud platform, the, the providers have a document called as a PIA document, which will help us to understand the level of privacy which can be offered by the cloud service provider. Okay, like that. Then in this domain team, they will definitely ask you regarding the auditing. What is the primary goal of auditing? When you do auditing, means what is the primary goal? Why we are performing an audit? That's a very important thing. What is the audit scope statement? That means what? What is the why? What is the scope of auditing? What is the audit scope statement? That means what is the primary goal of auditing? So if somebody asks you what is the primary goal of auditing team, what you will say? The primary goal of auditing is to identify the gap. To identify the gap, where most imp very important thing to understand. Okay, then the process of auditing. If you can get an overview of that, that's basically definitely good. Okay, that's a very very important thing to understand. The next thing is that also you have to understand basically the you know like when talking about audit auditing and all basically what is the goal, what is the purpose of policy for auditing, who are the people who should be involved as a part of auditing, what are the specific requirements you have to follow when doing that. And especially when you go to cloud, you have a lot of uh, locations where you host your data, right? So how it can impact your business, all these things you should be basically aware of that. Now, now the next thing is that there is something called as a implications of risk management. So you should be aware of the con concept between risk, vulnerability, and threat. First of all, you have to understand the difference between risk, vulnerability, and threat. What is the difference team? So let me give you an example. Vulnerability means a weakness. Vulnerability means a weakness. Risk uh, and threat is a action which exploit the vulnerability. I repeat, vulnerability is a weakness. Threat is an action uh, which basically 
exploit the vulnerability then the outcome is called as a risk the outcome is called as a risk okay like that so understand that what is the what is the uh, so basically in the cloud platform understand that the cloud service customer is also called as data owner and data or data controller i repeat if you basically go for a cloud platform the data owner is also called as data controller or data uh, or the customer is basically called as owner and controller and if you go to a cloud platform the cloud service provider is basically the data custodian or data processor just understand this word okay the second thing is that what are the different type of risk treatment methodologies okay what are the different type of risk treatment methodologies uh, so team when talking about risk treatment we have a mainly four types risk acceptance risk avoidance risk transfer risk mitigation what is risk mitigation mitigation means that i am putting the various controls in place to reduce the risk to an, uh, to acceptable level is called as risk mitigation what is risk avoidance i am avoiding the risk by not I, or i am taking a different course of action and i am avoiding the risk that's called as a risk avoidance then what is risk acceptance if the risk is within the value which we can manage or we can tolerate that is called as a risk accept acceptance what is risk transfer you are transferring certain risk to a cloud or to a third party like a cloud service provider understand the four types of risk treatment methodologies then understand the various type of risk so basically understand that there are also multiple frameworks we have for risk assessment you just has to understand like iso 31000 nis risk management framework cobit is there like this we have different framework for risk management just understand those okay you don't have to memorize just have to understand names that's all the next one is basically and uh, you know like when you basically go for a cloud platform you have to clearly understand the business requirements you have to basically understand the vendor management constraints with the challenges uh, what are the reasons why we basically should have a effective contract management all these things we already discussed in the various topics so it will be easy for you that's all so then this is the whole things you have to understand in ccsp as a quick overview from today yesterday onwards so can we go for some simple questions team to understand the perspective so whenever you basically go for the examination team i will tell you what you have to do okay whenever you get a question don't read the question first always make sure you read the choices my go my suggestion is that team when you basically go for the examination always read the choices read all the choices okay then you read the entire question then you read the entire question first you read the choices then you read the entire question so after this see when you read the question you will get a complete idea of the context and always focus on what they're asking you team in this question what they're asking you in this question what they this is what they're asking you right see even though we read the entire question don't bother about the scenario you are not the one who has to worry about this or concern about this much the only thing you have to worry about is what they're asking you you are the cloud security architect for a large enterprise that has been utilizing a cloud service provider for several critical workloads due to change in the business strategy and evolving compliance requirements the organization is concerned about the possibility of migrating its data and application to an alternate cloud provider if needed which of the following strategies and technologies is the most useful while ensuring the portability and reversibility which would facilitate a smoother migration while minimizing the risk of vendor lock in so i want to make sure i am able to have a portability with a less chance of vendor lock in okay i want to have a most useful way of ensuring portability with minimize risk of vendor lock in so the answer is i will go for a multi cloud strategy i will go for a multi cloud strategy see even if you have a contract with a csp team uh, you know it's see it's not about securing the favorable pricing 
okay i want the, the question talking most effective option that means if you go for b you can see that obviously i can basically have a reversibility because i can have a two cloud multiple cloud providers i'm not depending on only one provider plus i am not you i'm using containerization what is the benefit of containerization i can make sure that i'm able to have a lack uh, i have i can ha have a complete independency because i can have a complete things package on a container it can be moved to any platforms i want right so which will help us to have a complete portability the answer is b so team can we go to next question one more question A global e-commerce company is planning to migrate its customer applications to the cloud. The company wants to ensure that security and privacy of customer data while optimizing the performance of its applications. The security team is specifically concerned about the potential DDoS attacks and want to implement a solution that migrate mitigates that impact of attacks in the cloud. In the context of migrating customer-facing applications from cloud, which app architectural design strategy, which architectural design strategy is most efficient for mitigating the impact of those attacks not mitigating those attacks mitigating the impact of those attacks and ensuring the application performance so team if i basically go for d or c or b that's basically not for the same thing but if i go for a what happens team if i go for c what is the problem ips is basically ips is basically a different thing it's not for this right but it doesn't give me uh, this you know uh, it doesn't give me the best option for uh, optimizing the application performance and mitigating about those of DDoS attacks and it will increase the cost, right? I want to go for the most effective solution. So for that, for a mitigating the impact of DDoS attacks, I'll go for a WAF. Plus also I'll go for a CDN. The benefit of CDN is that as we have a CDN there, it is getting distributed across the different locations and the traffic will be, the, the queries coming will be absorbed. Okay, by the CDN. So it can help us to maintain the service. The answer is A. Okay, now team, let's go to a quick overview on, uh, you know, just quick things you have to always keep in mind. Whenever you basically go for an examination team, there are some points we have to always keep in mind. Make sure whenever you basically go for the examination, the most important, the most important thing you have to keep in mind is that this exam, when you go for the examination, if you rush, the chance of the exam failing is high. So don't rush. So make sure for the examination perspective, you have to always make sure you take proper time. So take one minute for one question and use the entire time. You know, you don't have to basically rush early and it doesn't give you a benefit. Use the proper time. Why do you want to rush? What is the reason you're rushing? No need. Okay. Take your proper amount of time. Second thing is that when you basically go for the examination, read the questions very carefully. Follow the, read the review the answers first, then the questions. Focus on the key points like what, when, both, most, best, except first least like that those kind of things can basically change the entire answer and use the and team if you basically rush for the examination what happens team the reason why the exam can be challenging is not because the exam is tough because you will get exhausted because you have to remember all the concepts so to better to make sure that instead of rushing through the all concepts and making it so much exhaustive i would recommend you always you know uh go through the what we can say go uh like just make sure to take a proper time, take a proper breaks in between. Like after, let's say 50 questions, you take a 10 minutes break, sit idle there, just sit peacefully and sit idle there. Then again, go for the next set of questions. Like by doing that, you will get your brain giving some time to, you know, sh uh, you slow down for some time. So it will improve your performance. Okay, do not rush. And make sure you book the examination on the nearest PSNBU IC skill authorized exam center. Plus on the exam day, make try to, you know, make sure that, you know, you prepare everything well, have your ID with you. It's a very important thing. And while you go for the examination, make sure you go through all the concepts one more time quickly. And in the examination, the only thing is that 
they will test a lot of your english skills and all i feel what i feel so always make sure you read the question one or two times but very very important read the entire question and the biggest challenge i always feel is that team you can think you have to think like a manager you don't have to like you know you don't have to worry about how the technicality is there focus on more of a management perspective about your business right like that